Hi, my name is Dr. Tracy Bolander. I'm a licensed psychologist and CEO of Mid-Atlantic Behavioral Health. And I'm here today on behalf of NAMI to talk to you a little bit about how to use telehealth most effectively as a patient or consumer. COVID-19 has changed our lives in so many ways, but one of the studies that has not changed is the need to take care of our health especially our mental health during this time of distress. If you are looking to start care or continue in care, you're probably being asked by your provider to conduct your visits via telehealth. While this means of receiving treatment has been around for quite some time, it is new to many patients and even to some providers. So what I'd like to do today is share with you some tips and tricks for making the most of this visit. By the end of this webinar, you should be able to have a general understanding of what telehealth is, learn some of the benefits of telehealth, learn what to expect from a telehealth provider or telehealth session, and learn what you as a consumer or patient can do to get the most out of your session. When someone says telehealth, it's very easy to be confused. There's so many different words that people use. They might say telemedicine. They might say, I'm going to see you via telepsych, or we're going to hold a teletherapy session, or we're going to do it as a telehealth session. Most people use all of those words interchangeably, and what they actually mean is different for each person. When I started first learning about telehealth, I got this picture in my mind. If any of the rest of you out there are Big Bang Theories fans, you probably remember when Sheldon decided that it was just too dangerous to be out in public at all. So he created his own robot, for which he dressed him like Sheldon would dress, and he would wheel it around via his computer, and Sheldon's face would appear on the screen, computer screen, and he could talk to others that way. Back in the old days of telehealth, usually the provider did come to you via a great big, huge device that was wheeled into your room. But that is no longer the case. When we talk about telehealth today, it's really just the provision of health care done remotely by means of telecommunication. And it being remote may mean that the provider is in another area and remotely coming into you here in Delaware, or it may be that you're in another area and the provider is coming to you with the use of technology. This graph shows us some of the different ways that we can deliver telehealth. It can be delivered for a number of reasons. It may just be a regular primary care visit. It may be an urgent care visit. It may be for a specialty service, or it may be just a standard care like your regular therapy visit or meeting with your psychiatrist. There's three different places when we think about telehealth that telehealth can occur. When telehealth was first getting started, and still a bulk of telehealth will often happen in the hospital setting. So that you might be in the hospital, let's say in the emergency room, and they wanted to get a psychiatric consult, but the psychiatrist isn't on staff at one in the morning and unable to come up and see you. So they might use the help of technology to have you through a laptop or a tablet, connect with a psychiatrist that's on call that can evaluate you and make recommendations about your treatment. Telehealth can also happen in a clinic. And as we started to see more and more telehealth happening, even in the outpatient behavioral health world, it was first done in clinics where the provider might be remote. For example, I have a psychiatric nurse practitioner that lives in Boston, and she still wanted to continue to treat her patients that she had started treating while she was here in Delaware. And so her patients would come into my office and they would be placed in front of a computer and they could meet with her 
from her office in Boston. So that would be telehealth that happens in the clinic setting. What's happening more and more now is that telehealth is happening in the patient's home. And by home, I use that term loosely because it could also mean your office or it could be that you go out to your car during a break while you are at work and have a private spot there. But where the patient is actually in somewhere where they're comfortable. And most insurance companies have started covering this. And during COVID-19, they have really loosened uh, restrictions on this so that your telehealth session might actually happen from the comfort of your home or office. Lots of research has started to be done on telehealth, and we are finding that there are absolutely many benefits. And as you start to use telehealth during COVID-19, I predict that you're going to discover some of these benefits as well and may even want to use it after COVID-19 allows us to get back in offices in certain situations. Some of the benefits of telehealth is it really can make care much more accessible. If you have difficulties with childcare or transportation, or you live in a place where there just isn't a psychiatrist nearby, um, you can have the option of meeting with that per person virtually. So it really does increase our ability to help patients. Um, and because of COVID-19, we're excited to report that many states and many payers are now allowing telehealth. Prior to COVID-19, there were many insurance plans that would not allow you to have your visit via telehealth or to restrict who could be the telehealth provider. For example, you may be able to log on to telehealth or I'm sorry, Teladoc, and get the psychiatrist on call to see you via a telehealth appointment. But you may not have been able to use your psychiatrist or therapist that you typically use. The exciting thing about COVID-19 is it is allowed for most insurers and in most states for everyone to have telehealth accessibility. So definitely much more accessible. It also offers a lot of schedule flexibility, both for patients and providers. One of the exciting things we're seeing is that now that providers can see patients from their home, they're actually seeing more patients. Um, it allows you flexibility in that you may be able to hop out for an appointment during your work day because it's only going to take you 15 minutes, half an hour, 44, 45 minutes, not the typical hour it would take you or hour and a half that it would take you because of your drive time. So it does offer a lot of flexibility and scheduling. We do know that telehealth can be as effective as in-person care. It can reduce delays in care because you can get there more quickly because you have more schedule, schedule flexibility and so can the provider. It also increases the number of providers that are available because we can use providers not only um, within our state, but also outside of our state. We've also seen that telehealth definitely improves continuity of care, follow-up, and outcomes. Being at a very in a very private setting may help reduce stigma for people and also may make people feel safer because they are in the comfort or their home, of their home or office. There are some important things to keep in mind when we're talking about telehealth delivery. It is not made for everyone, either as a patient or as a provider. So it's incumbent upon both the providers and the patients to know when is the right time to use telehealth. During COVID-19, most of us have no choice and we're using it for almost everything, um, but we still have to follow some appropriate care guidelines. The provider that is using telehealth must be able to safely deliver the same quality of care that they would deliver to you while you were in the office. The provider must also have training or experience in telehealth service delivery. Lots of providers had to learn very, very quickly how to use telehealth to get the information they need with from their patients. The good news is that many local and national organizations have stepped up and offered lots of free training for providers. So it's 
perfectly okay for you to ask your provider how much experience or training they have in telehealth and how comfortable do they feel with delivering their service in that way. Another important thing to know is that the provider must be licensed in the state that they are delivering services. So if you are at your home or office in Delaware, the provider, therapist, psychiatrist, primary care physician treating you must also be licensed in Delaware. For that reason, if you work in Pennsylvania, you under normal circumstances would likely not be able to see your provider from your office in Pennsylvania if they are not also licensed in, De in Pennsylvania. It, during COVID-19, many of these restrictions have been lifted and we can see patients across state lines. Um, but it's important for you to inquire as to whether your provider is licensed in whatever state you are receiving services in and or if it's during COVID-19 if they have made sure that there's an exception that they can actually treat you. Um, some other things to keep in mind is that the provider needs to be in a private, well-lit, and quiet space. You have the right and they should tell you when they start the session that they are in the, the only one in the room, that there is no one outside the parameters of the camera, and you will not be interrupted during your session as it's just as important for them to be present and paying attention to you while on telehealth as if as it would be if you were in the session in person. It's also important for you as the consumer to make sure that you have those same parameters, that you are in a private, well-lit, quiet, distraction-free environment. The provider also has to provide you a backup plan in case technology fails, either on your end or their end. So they will likely advise you that you need to have a phone nearby. And if for any reason you need lose connectivity, they will reach out to you via phone. The provider will also ask you to provide written informed consent saying you understand that you're receiving your uh, services via telehealth and what the risks and benefits of that are. During COVID-19, we of course are allowed to get just verbal consent for that. The provider's responsibility is also to ensure that their technology meets certain standards. Their goal is that we have clear audio and visual on both sides. In almost all cases, you are required to have both audio and visual. Some insurances, except Medicare, are currently per per permitting, sorry, permitting phone sessions during COVID-19. But this is atypical about what is usually allowed. And the reason for that is just like in person, you get a lot of information from nonverbals, from the person's face, from their tone, from the, the posture that they're, they're presenting in. You also get that same information when you're uh, conducting sessions via telehealth, and that's absolutely critical as a provider in understanding what's going on for your p patient. The platform that they are using in typical situations must be HIPAA compliant. They must be able to ensure that it's encrypted and it's secure, no one can hack into it, that they have a what's called a business associate agreement with the company so that that company ensures that your information is secure. Uh, discretion is being allowed for this during COVID-19 so that providers and patients can use things that they may be more familiar with, like FaceTime or Zoom, which, is, which are often not HIPAA compliant. So your provider may be using those with you during COVID-19. It's just important for you to understand what they're using and what are some of the risks and benefits of using things like that. The provider and you must make sure that you have a secure and adequate speed in her internet so you don't get all broken up when they're looking at your picture or frozen. Um, it's, sometimes it's kind of funny though when somebody freezes the picture, the, the picture that gets stuck up there. I'm sure you've all done that when you're FaceTiming with friends 
and you screenshot it. Nobody can screenshot anything when you're doing telehealth, but you sometimes see those funny faces that people are making if you don't have a good internet connection. Um, and what I just mentioned there is one thing that's very important for you to know is that they are using a, a um, platform that does not allow for recording during your without your permission. And you it's okay to ask them how you would know if they were recording a session. And if they are using a platform that's compliant, they would be able to tell you. Many of our, the, the system we use at our practice does not allow for recording at all. So that's not even an option. There are lots of platforms that folks are gonna use. This is just some that you may see out there. Um, and they all have different strengths and weaknesses. The goal for you, especially during COVID-19, can your provider see you? Can you hear, can they hear you? And can you interact appropriately no matter which system they are using? Many patients will say, I don't know if I can do this. I feel like it's going to be really hard. The good news is it's not. Back in the day when I had to wheel in that big computer into a room for somebody to look at, that was a lot of work. And those computers were a lot of money. But in today's day and age, it's no different than when you're FaceTiming with friends. You're just using a different platform. So lots of ways to access telehealth. You can do it via computer. You can do it via laptop. You can do it with a tablet with a smartphone, the smartphone would have video capabilities. And under COVID-19, you can also do it with a phone for some insurances. Patients will often say, I'm, I'm very anxious about this. I'm, I'm nervous. What's it gonna be like? I know what it's like when I walk into my therapist's office. I'm gonna sit in the same chair that I usually sit in. They're gonna sit across from me. A, a therapy session via telehealth is much the same way. Just like when you called your doctor's office to very first schedule your appointment, when you get switched over to telehealth, your provider will set you up with an appointment in whatever platform that they're using. So you'll likely receive a link or a login with important information about your, your appointment. Many of the systems will also send you reminders. What you see on your screen is I set myself up an appointment at my practice the other day so that I could show you some of the things you would see if you were doing a therapy session with us. If it was time for your session and you hadn't logged in, you would get this reminder that we're waiting for you and to go ahead and log in. And then we would expect you to log into your session. I did take a picture of our session, but remember what I said about frozen faces? I could not get our, our faces not to have all kinds of funny faces. So I didn't use those. I instead used some off the internet about what you might see as you're logging into a telehealth session with your provider. This is from a laptop. This one is from a um, cell phone, and this one is from a tablet. You may see just your provider on the screen, or you may see your provider in yourself. It depends on the platform that they're using. Once you're in your session, what patients and providers tell me all the time is most often you forget that you're in front of a video especially if it's a provider you've been working with for a while. It's just like you're in session together and the provider will conduct those sessions much like they do um, if you are face-to-face. -face. They're of course gonna remind you about confidentiality as well as the HIPAA guidelines. They're gonna get that in informed consent to, help, to telehealth if they didn't already do that. They're gonna also do something that they don't do when you come into the office. They're gonna have you confirm your identity. If this is somebody you've been seeing for a while, they can see you on the screen, they saw you in person, they knew who you are. But if this is the first time you're seeing them, don't be surprised if somebody asks you to hold up a picture ID. So if it's your first session, I would have your driver's license handy because they may want to see that just to confirm that who they are talking to is actually the person who they think it is. 
they're also going to ask you to confirm your ident or your location. They do that for a couple of reasons. Number one, we need to know exactly where you are just in case we need to get emergency help to you. We also need to know where you are for those licensing rules, right? I need to know that you're in Delaware since I'm licensed in Delaware to ensure that I am following the federal and national guidelines. I'm also going to confirm your contact information. I'm going to make sure that I have the correct cell phone number for you so that I can get you should we run into any kind of difficulties. Probably also confirm emergency contact information just in case I need someone in emergency. And then I should also be telling you at the very start of the session that no one is in the room with me and no one will be interrupting us and no one can hear us and I am not recording this session in any way. So those are expectations that you should have going into the session. And if those don't happen, remember it's okay for you to ask. As the patient, you guide the session as much as the provider does. The provider will also probably talk to you about billing and payment because you can't stop at the receptionist out front to pay your copay or any past due balance. So they are likely going to be asking you to put a credit card on file that they should be keeping in an encrypted system that they will be able to charge you each time or they will ask for it when it's when you're on the call so that they can run it right then and there. So expect a discussion about billing and payment because we have to make adjustments for them too. They'll also talk to you about the parameters for how to contact them if you need them between sessions, especially during COVID-19 because many of the office staff are also not in the office. So you need to know how you can get in touch with your provider if you need them between sessions. Then they'll begin the session and they'll proceed just as they would as if you were in office and proceed with your treatment according to your plan. They'll also set specifics around your next visit and what your goals are there. Some tips for you to maximize your patient experience. First and foremost, Please, please, please make sure you have a private space. It's a space where you're safe, where you're alone. No one's coming in to borrow a cup of sugar or to have their shoes tied. Um, this should be, you should treat this just as if you are in the office and this is your special time with that provider. Make sure it's well lit so they can see you as well as you can see them. And again, make sure there's no distractions. I'm gonna jump down to the third one, which is act as, if, as you would if you were in the office. Um, in today's day and age, we often forget we're on video and that the other person can see us because it's such a natural part of our lives. So one of the things that's really critical when you're doing your telehealth visits is treat it just like you would as the office. Think about that when you're getting dressed for your appointment, when you're choosing to where to do your appointment from. Remember, no public places, no locations even within your house that you wouldn't typically invite your provider to with you. Um, Think about it when you're, you're engaging in your behaviors, um, how, you, how you're talking to your provider as well as other people in the room. Um, remember, it's just like doing an office visit. While you're doing that office visit, it's really important that you build and maintain your rapport. Keep looking at the camera. It's really tempted when you're at home to be distracted by things in your environment the kids, the pets, the things on your desk, the laundry that needs done. But this is your appointment time. Those chores, those kids, that dirty desk will all still be there after your appointment time. Give your health and your mental health the same time you would give it if you had the opportunity to go to the office. When you're holding your appointment, also make sure that you share any concerns you have, not just your normal concerns, but if you have any concerns about telehealth or how things are going, make sure you share those with your provider. So that's the actual, what you should do during the actual session. I'm also gonna give you a tip there in the middle, which is make sure you practice. Log in 
before your appointment. Test your video, test your audio, make sure they work okay. Earbuds are often a great way to really hear your provider and know that others aren't. Um, and for them to hear you best. Make sure your device is fully, fully, fully charged. A 45 minute or an hour therapy session is a long time for running video and audio. So make sure your phone is fully charged. There's nothing worse when a session has to end for me because the person's phone died and then I can't even call them. So please, please, please make sure all of your devices are charged. And my last bit of advice in preparing for your session is to make sure your phone is handy in case something goes wrong. That's where they're probably going to call you. And during COVID-19, many of the providers are at home. So many of them are calling from their cell phones, so it's probably going to come from a blocked number. Check your cell phone. Make sure you don't have it set so that it will not accept blocked numbers, and make sure you answer a blocked number, especially if it's during your appointment time. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. I hope it increases your comfort with telehealth and you have the opportunity to experience many of the benefits of this option as a way to get your mental health and your regular health care treatment. And my hope is that it is beneficial enough for you that you will even continue it once things return to normal. Have an amazing day. Thanks.